So today I just thought we'd take a look at this controller for the Princess Carriage. I did do a video about trying to repair the original controller from the carriage. It, it had a lot of corrosion. We cleaned up the corrosion. Um, we had a bad dual diode assembly here and we put it back together. I actually tested it on the bench. I ran it with a, a motor that I had here because at the time I didn't have the Princess carriage here uh, at my location. All I had was the controller. I had it all apart. After repairing it and testing it out, it ran my motor fine. The transistors were good. But one thing I thought was interesting about this controller is we do have our black and red incoming. That is our power coming in. And I have drawn out a diagram here. I'm working on a completed diagram. I'll talk about it more in the, in the next video because it's hard to find the diagram for the princess carriage. So after searching around, I thought it'd be a good idea to, to get into it just a little bit deeper and maybe draw out the wiring diagram and see if it helps others. But one thing we noticed, as I was saying, is the red and black come into the controller and the yellow and blue go out. If you like me and know a little bit about controllers, well, that's a little bit odd because this being a controller, controller box, whatever they call it, we don't have a zero to 10 volt signal. We don't have a four to 20 milliamp signal. We don't have a control of this relay coming in. So what this thing does is it takes the 24 volts in and simply directs it out to the load, to the motors, through the switches, and all that, as we'll see um, from the controllers, what I drew here in this preliminary drawing. So what this is, I kind of call this like a soft start. So we got a little comparator. We got a shunt here. So we're checking current. So if you give this thing power, it goes through a little PTC here on board, goes through the diode and powers up the relay. So the relay, I let the 24 volts be on the bus. And these are our two FETs, our transistors that actually do our current control. So I'm calling this a current controller. And I have taken the screws out of the brand new one. This is a Wiley controller. I believe is how you say it. And the quality of this looks just great. It looks extremely similar to the original. I'm actually not gonna take anything loose since it's brand new. But we also see a similar relay. We see a PTC here as well. I definitely see, but just looking in there, I definitely see my shun and my comparator. This is going to be extremely um, similar in design. The friend that I'm working on this princess carriage for, I mean, he's he's really good at working on stuff himself. So I knew when he brought me this, it was going to be a, a tough one. We did get the controller going. It ran for a while and he said it quit again. And when he brought the controller back to me, both of these transistors are now shorted. So if you can see that going on the tab and going across the gate, the drain, the source. I mean, all three, all three legs are shorted. And it was not the case. I had my PN junction before. So this time I decided it probably wasn't worth repairing the controller for the price. But I will just wait and get a brand new one. So that looks great. We're going to hook it up and try it out. But I did want to talk briefly about it being a current type control and just how I think it works and um and why it's kind of different to be a controller. It's just an inline device. And by the way, we do see that our um, our connectors look the same. If they did by chance get something wrong with these, I mean these connectors are fairly easy to move around. You could just slide these. So if one does come apart on you, don't don't panic. Just um just look at the highs lined up and just put it back. They do slide together. They, they kind of like Legos in a way. They're pretty neat. Since the carriage does cost a lot, we definitely want to keep it running. So at the price point of about 30 US dollars, it's going to be a good fix. As well as the uh, foot switch that I did on the first video for the princess carriage. And it is possible that this switch is could, it could have been what was taking out the controller because as we look at the switch, this is the face of the connector and this is how I drew the switch out. But we see that it does go to the controller to give it power. And it also has a normally closed contact when it rests. It actually goes across blue and yellow. So it kind of shorts this out to make sure um, that's just for safety. You know, it just kills it. You know, you get your power to it on the same switch. 
you release it, it goes across the black and red coming from the controller here. And then the blue and the yellow go across the normally closed as well. Just as it's shown out here. This will be plugged in just like so. And that's looking at it and how it's laid out. But if we look really close at this switch, it's even some plastic melted around this terminal. All the rest of them look normal. And this one has a little bit of melted black plastic around it. And we can see that it looks just even at an angle where it melted. And if we pop this one open, we see our rocker contacts in here. And we see that this one does not rock. I, matter of fact, I can't even, I can't even take it out if I want to. It is melted into the plastic. Right now, it seems to be open on both, which is probably the best case scenario for, for this one. But it's also possible that the reason it's overheated and opened up and melted to the center position is it probably failed shorted. And it probably failed shorted and stayed shorted, even though the switch tried to move on switch throw one, we probably got our red to our orange and it made our way back to our controller. But unfortunately, we probably shorted out the blue and the yellow on the controller. So that's one thing to look at when you're troubleshooting these is how the switch fails. It's not always just, you know, when you push the button, it's not going. And while we're talking about the controller, one thing to also mention is that the controller does need to be in series with this carriage. If you do try to run the battery straight through, because this is just current limiting, it will run. And what we found is it doesn't run long and the motor thermals start opening up because apparently this soft start and current limiting is a very important factor in the design. So also keep that in mind. And now we're just gonna hook the controller up. It just plugs up the black and white connector connect like so. And there we go. We're ready to test it out. And don't forget to stay tuned for our next video where we'll talk about the wiring diagram a little bit better, maybe some troubleshooting. So I hope you like the video. Please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.